Uh, USC coming up <clears throat> at the Coliseum, tough place to play. Uh, you know, historically, we've, uh, you know, the wins have been hard to come by there, very hard to come by. Um, playing exceptionally well on offense, nearly 50 points and 500 yards every week, just shy of that. And uh, that's what you'd expect when they have the Heisman Trophy candidate quarterback running the show. Uh, tons of talent all over the field, speed, athleticism. Uh, the freshman, number one, is a tremendous and outstanding uh, punt returner as well. He's taking a kickoff to the house uh, in addition. So uh, got our hands full. Got to be able to uh, try to keep up with them athletically and, uh, you know, got to do a good job offensively of continuing to take care of the football. That's you know, even though we haven't uh, been prolific by any stretch on offense, we've done a good job of not putting the defense in, in bad situations. And so that's been that's been uh, really good. Special teams in the past game was really not much of a factor. Again, um, we didn't have our best game with our specialists. Uh, Jack uh, didn't punt as well as he has been punting, so it was a little off there. We missed a, an easy field goal, and uh, you know we didn't kick off as as well as we needed to. But but uh, those guys will bounce back, and, and they've been solid for us this year. So uh, let's start off with Justin, and and then get uh, get going. Tamaki okay. had a phenomenal showing on Saturday. Is there a trend in college football to get your um, playmakers out on the field and have them play both ways? Do you have any more of these? <clears throat> I would say it's, I don't think it's a trend, but it's something that uh, you see from time to time. You're seeing Colorado do it. Uh, I'm sure there's some, you know, some other schools in the country I'm not aware of that, that spot play a, a defender on offense or vice versa. Uh, Colorado's a little different where I think the guy plays full time, both, both sides. So that, that is uh, really impressive, but uh, you want to get, uh, the ball in the hands of your playmakers and get your best players involved as much as you can. We did that with Eric Weddle uh, several years ago, did it with Matt Asiata. And so, well, Matt didn't play both ways, but he, but he doubled as a Wildcat quarterback. And so uh, just any way you can manufacture uh, production, then uh, you got to take a look at it. And we have a lot of good players on the team, but uh, it's not, you know, it's a tall order to, to play both ways. And so I don't, I don't see us doing that with anybody else, at least not right now. But uh, Sione sure gave us a big spark in that game. Kyle, it always seems that when Utah and USC play each other, it's um, significant and there's something on the line. Can you just maybe speak to what this matchup has been for the last few years? Yeah, it's been uh, great. I don't want to call it a rivalry because I don't think that's, that's uh, you know the situation, but it's been a great uh, back-and-forth series. Um, and like you said, implications typically every year, most every year, uh, conference implications, championship implications. We, of course, we played them in the championship game last year. So uh, it's it's turned out to be a very competitive uh, and a very intense football game, and I'm sure this year will be no different. Uh, Caleb Williams has come off one of his, definitely his worst game of his career, which is he hasn't had many of those. Do you look at that Notre Dame film, or do you look more at what they did against you guys last the last two games? We look at everything, and, and uh, we'll look at uh, certainly, you know, the Notre Dame game is, is very applicable. Uh, we also go back and, and look at our, you know, our game, uh, two games last year, and do, you know, we do as much research and homework as, as you can. There's a saturation point where you get too much and it, it starts to dilute things. But, but yeah, we'll, we'll absolutely look at uh, the Notre Dame game and, and then our game from la our two games from last year. Kyle, with your secondary, it, you know, there's been moments where they've been burned through passes, but what do you feel like you've seen from them and do you feel confident now going into the stretch where quarterbacks are going to be taking more shots downfield? Okay, our secondary? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Say the, yeah say just like there's been a couple times where your secondary, your safety, your corners or uh -huh. something have been, you know, they've been a pass that's burning. It hasn't been a lot, but right. now that you're going to face more quarterbacks that like to air it out a little bit more, do you feel confident in that group? Well, we, we like those guys, and, and right now we're leading the conference in pass efficiency defense, which is the number one barometer that you look at for your pass defense. It's not overall yards, it's, it's the efficiency. Uh, you're right, there's some big challenges on the horizon, and uh, we'll see how we hold up, but but uh, I think we've uh, done some good things in the secondaries, Amaya and, and JT and Miles holding down the fort at the corner spots. Uh, we've had Teo Johnson at the at the slot corner, and then uh, those safeties, so I, th I really like our secondary and think we got a you know, some good players back there, but they will be tested, no doubt, coming up. So we'll see. Kyle, you have defensive stars like John Ellis and Lander Barton, where they have 
either parents or siblings that were past stars in the Utah football program. Um, what does that do in terms of influencing how the program grows to have stars from the same families like that? And conversely, how does it also influence how those players develop in that hut? Well, it certainly helps, and I think it speaks to the experience that those uh, their parents had here. You know, wanting wanting their children to come here and and uh, and be a part of the program. And uh, ironically enough, I coached Luther. He was my, my first year here was his senior year, and so so now I'm uh, we're recruiting guys of players that I coach. That really shows how old I'm getting. But but uh, I, I view that as a positive, and uh, you know we hope it continues. And and uh, you know there's some more guys uh, in the near future here that that have. Uh, Parents that played here and, and uh, were recruiting them as well, and so I, I just look at that as a, a big plus for the program, and and particularly when they're uh, really good players like Jonah. How long does it typically take to find out on the bill on a targeting call? Now we got denied. You got denied. Yeah, got denied. I I don't want to really whine about it, but it, it was. Uh, I still don't see how it it happened and or how it was called and and how it got denied the appeal. So. It's uh, it's baffling, but nothing we can do about it. So you move forward. Nate, Nate Ritchie, yep. Nate played some good football for us on Saturday, and has played some really good football for us uh, in years past. And so we got uh, a ton of confidence in Nate. Um, packages for for Nate Johnson were they were you ready to go with them against Cal? They just didn't call for it, or were you, that was the plan all along. That was the plan all along. He was our number two QB, and and the the package plays were Sione Baki plays this week. And so there's you know you can't have too much stuff. You spread yourself too thin, and you don't have time to, or not time, but enough snaps to get to it all. And so uh, there was nothing really that we had that we didn't get to. It's just that Bryson played well, and so we went with Bryson the entire way. What was the process of getting Sione involved on the offensive side? Did you have desires to do that beforehand, or was it kind of uh, forced by the injury? Well, a little of both. Uh, you know, we at one time Juquindon was down, of course, uh, Makai Bernard's down, and then Chris Curry went down. We lost three of our top four running backs, so it was out of necessity that we find a way to supplement uh, the running game and particularly have a guy as ready as we can get him in the event that we lost another back, because then we'd be down to, you know, really the bare bones. And so uh, just made the decision. And, and, you know, looking back past history, you know, you had defended, like I said, Eric Weddle, as I mentioned earlier and several times, a guy like that, which Sione is a very explosive, fast, I mean, you saw him get out of that, whatever that run was, 70 yards, it was a long run, 60, 70 yards. And so uh, partly out of necessity and partly out, partly out of trying to find a way to maximize the, you know, the best players on the football team. Um, Munir McLean elevated on the depth chart today mm -hmm. with uh, Mike Pittman's injury. Mm -hmm. Now, obviously, it seems like he's been kind of the go-to guy for you know, downhill chunk plays through the passing game. How do you kind of get him more involved going forward? Yeah, it's a, it's a good point, and uh, Munir is a good athlete and made the big play. That was the only rep he had in the game was, you know, the deep ball that, that one he caught. And so uh, now is his opportunity. You know, he, he should be getting more opportunities going forward. What what his issue has been is, is staying healthy. He's had a hard time with nagging injuries and, and things that have kept him off the field. Uh, if he can stay on the field consistently, he's a big-time athlete and really could be a, a plus for us. So we're hoping that uh, that he's able to uh, can be consistent in his practice and, and being out there. As the season develops, is it harder to get Cam and Brand back if they ever get back, or do you expect them to get back at this point? Yeah, you know, that's a good question. Again, it's uh, you know, it's just a, a situation where we're just waiting uh, week after week for a, a thumbs up. Um, you know, here we are at the midpoint, uh, so the, you know, I don't want to I don't want to say the clock is ticking, but but uh, we would love to have uh, either or both those guys back as, as soon as possible. But but again, it's. Uh, it's just a waiting game and, and waiting for the waiting for the go ahead, waiting for the green light. Is the possibility of a red shirt? Been... You keep getting squelched. <laughs> <laughs> What's that? You got to be more aggressive and bold. I'm trying to be polite to borrow. <laughs> just, just following up on the I don't want to create a stir. Am I stirring the pot? I mean, I'll, 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 I know. Let's, let's throw let's throw it down. <laughs> right not now. a big stir. <laughs> <laughs> um, with with Cam Grant, has the possibility of a red shirt been discussed at all? Uh, not yet. But uh, any, you know, medical red shirts now, uh, where it used to be in years past, if you voluntarily red shirted and then had an injury, you didn't get a year back. But now you can get a medical year back no matter why you red shirted in the past. And, 
and I shouldn't say no matter why, but if it was, they call it coach's decision, which every red shirt is really a, a coach's decision. And so uh, it is a possibility. It hasn't really been talked about uh, at length or in detail, but certainly that is something that, that is one way this thing could break. And so we'll see what happens. If it gets to a point where they would seek a medical red shirt, how much leeway would you give into the offseason to let them make that decision? Obviously, that would be huge. Well, the, if they don't play at all, they yeah. will get the year. And so what do you mean leeway after the season? Don't you have to apply for a medical retro? Yeah, but it's, it's a slam dunk. Oh. It's pretty much a slam dunk nowadays. You know, the, the NC2A, if you have a, a medical that kept you out for the whole season uh, or in before the first, before the fifth game, you know, that, they have that rule. Uh, and it, it usually, I shouldn't say slam dunk, but 99%. Yeah. How about that? Has USC's offense improved this year from last year's? But I mean, they did pretty well against USC. Yeah, their numbers are better. I mean, it, as hard as it is to believe because their numbers were so good last year, but, but they are even more productive this year, uh, slightly, than they were last year. And, uh, you know, the quarterback is tremendous. Like I said, I can't say enough positive things about that guy. He's, he is... Uh, one of the most talented players we've ever faced uh, in my time here at Utah. Uh, with Cole Bishop <clears throat> missing the first half of the game, how much can you afford to play Stanley on offense? You have the depth at safety. We've got good depth at safety, and that, that won't impact Sione's play on offense at all. Uh, we talked about Nate Ritchie being the, the guy that'll step in for Cole, and we have uh, uh, Tao Johnson that can also play free safety. Saw him play free safety a few weeks ago. Uh, John O'Hall is a good, very good player, and so, so we think that uh, it's not going to impact other facets of the game. We just cover up for him while we're while we're in that first half. Did the first shakeup on the starting of line at least uh, this week with Jerry Kump out? What's the status of that unit? What's the status of who? Just the whole unit. As far whole as unit, the yeah. We, and- Coley uh, had outstanding practices uh, during the bye week and earned that job. Um, and so he deserved the opportunity to play and, and really played well. We had a good surge in the middle of the line last week. And you know, he's a physical kid. He's, he's uh, not the tallest kid, you know, 6'2", 6'3", but he's 320 pounds and, and exceptionally strong, maybe the strongest kid on the team uh, in the weight room. And so uh, that was uh, the change there. Um, the left tackle, uh, Spencer Fong got dinged up a little bit. So Tanoa Tongyai came in and, and played uh, good in, in Spencer's uh, absence. And we'll see what Spencer's availability will be this week. But that was the, the reason for those two two changes. Now that we've had time to review offensive line, what was the biggest difference this week compared to previous Push, week? more push on the line of scrimmage. Yet we're getting knockoff and and uh, being much more aggressive uh, with our combination blocks and and uh, more physical overall. That was really the key. There was nothing really schematically. You know, we're a zone team, inside zone, outside zone, a little bit of gap scheme. But, but uh, there was nothing majorly different schematically. Like I said, it was just better push and better physicality up front. Which Where's Bryce? Oh, sorry. Bryce? You're cutting me off now, too, <laughs> which is what they're capable of. I'm not going to blow with you. Go ahead. <laughs> uh, where does Bryce need to develop as a quarterback if, if he continues in this role? Where does Bryce need to develop? He's been in the program a long time. He knows the offense inside and out. He does a great job running the offense, uh, managing the game. I would say... Uh, you know, before this game, he was a little bit uh, inaccurate. I think it was down around 50% completion percentage. But again, this game, he was 70% plus. So I would think just being a little more confident in his ability to uh, get the chunk yardage up the field. And, and part of that's calling it as well. I mean, but, but some plays are called to take shots. And, you know, if the quarterback doesn't like it, he doesn't take the shot. He checks it down. And so I think maybe becoming a little more confident in himself uh, and putting the ball up the field. We saw Connor O'Toole finally oh, make yeah. his debut. That was uh, awesome. Was Connor played exceptionally well. Didn't play a ton of snaps, but uh, gave us, what, 25 or 30 really good snaps. Uh, I believe he got a sack, maybe a sack and a half. He's disruptive. He's a big, fast, athletic kid. He's a former, I think he was the, the high hurdle champion. He was a 100-meter guy and a hurdle champion in, in, in uh, high school. And so he's a guy that we've been anxiously awaiting and, uh, the return for and, and Van played well too. Van Van had been missing uh, for a couple weeks there with an injury, and so uh, if we can keep those three guys uh, in a rotation, you know Jonah, Van, and, and Connor, that really makes us uh, dangerous off the edge and gives us good good presence off the edge.
Uh, one piece of clarification with the medical redshirt, that would require playing no games this season, or could they play? Well, it's, it's if you play and then get hurt and then play no more, you get the medical redshirt if it's within five games, right. you know, no more than four. But if you're hurt initially, if you play at any time later on, that negates the medical redshirt. So, so you can be hurt in fall camp, and if you go 10 games without playing or 11 and playing the last one, then you don't have the medical redshirt. It's got to be season-ending injury. So, you're about to have the gauntlet of uh, the schedule through the next four against top 20 teams. Yeah. Um, uh, physically, how, you, where do you want to be? Obviously, you have some injuries, but you don't the stretch. Well, we, we're, uh, you know, it's going to be a tough stretch, first of all. And, and uh, you know, we've, uh, you know, you win with the players you got. So we're focusing on the guys that are healthy and, and the guys that are out there getting it done. And, and uh, we like the guys that uh, are playing for us. And, you know, sure, there's a bunch of guys that we wish we had, but we don't. So you, you just move on. Thanks, guys. Okay.